everyone. So for today, we'll be working on the solution for problem set 4, which is recover. So in this problem set, what we need to do is to recover JPEGs from a forensic image. And from card.raw, we should be able to recover 50 images. What are we told about JPEGs? So the first three bytes of a JPEG are 0xff, 0xd8, and 0xff respectively. So the fourth byte of a JPEG can be any of these 16 bytes. As long as we detect a pattern where the first four bytes are as such, it indicates the start of a JPEG image. So these are all stored back to back in the memory card in blocks of 512 bytes. So knowing all these, what does our program need to do? So we need to iterate over a copy of the memory card looking for JPEG signatures. So that will be the four bytes that we've just discussed. So if we detect these four bytes, what we want to do is that we will open a file for writing and we will fill that file with bytes from the memory card reading 512 bytes at a time. So as you can imagine, if there are 50 images, we should open 50 new files to write each image into. The image file recovered should also be named in ascending order in the format of a three-digit number. So the first image generated should be named 000.jpg and the next image being 001.jpg and so on. So before we move on, do remember to like and subscribe to the videos. I really appreciate how some of you have subscribed and liked or commented on the videos. It really makes my day. Thank you so much for your support. Moving on, we are also given quite comprehensive information on JPEGs, so let's take a closer look at this. We are told that images are stored back to back in blocks of 512 bytes. So, as per the table here, each cell represents 512 bytes. The first three bytes are fixed, but the fourth byte can be any of the following 16. So our system should go through each block of 512 bytes to check if it signals the start of the JPEG. Even after we locate it, we do not know how many of the subsequent blocks make up the image. So we will continue to move on each block of 512 bytes until we reach the next block that signals the start of another JPEG. So when this happens, what we need to do is to close the file that we are currently filling up and open a new file to start filling it up with the new file we have just found. So what would be the structure of our code? Firstly, we need to check that the user provides exactly one command line argument and then after that we will open the file and if it is invalid, it will print an error message. Next, before we start iterating through the file, we will declare the variables and files that we need for the next step. So in a way, we need to prepare all our variables first. Then, we will start to iterate over a copy of the memory card in blocks of 512 bytes. Once we detect the JPEG signature, we will create the file name, open the file for us to write into, track the number of images that we have found so far, and also write the newly found JPEG into an output file. Then, before we end, we just need to close the files that we have opened. So firstly, we will check that the user provides exactly one command line argument. So this is something that we've actually done in previous problem sets, so I'll just skim through this really quickly. So if the argument count is not 2, then we will print the following error message. Just to recap that the argument that the user keys in should be dot slash recover card dot raw. Next, we need to open a file, and if it's invalid, we will print the error message. So in the CS50 hints for recover, it states that we can actually use fopen to open card.raw programmatically. So we will use input underscore file to represent this file. So the syntax for fopen in this case will be as such. So we will use file uh, for asterisk input underscore file equals to fopen argv1 r. So what does this mean? So input underscore file is the file pointer that will enable the program to keep track of the address of the location of the file. So this means essentially it stores the address of this particular file. Next, argv1 actually refers to the file that we are working with. So in this case, it's argv1 referring to card.raw. Next, the r refers to the mode and what we are doing with the file. In this case, we are reading the file, so that's represented by r. So for this, what are we doing is really just to keep track of the address of the file. So what does this imply if the file cannot be opened? So if the file cannot be opened, that means that the address will not even exist, which means that input underscore file will return a null value. And that is how you detect if the file is invalid, and then you can print the error message from there. So let's put this in C. Okay, so first now what we will do is that we will declare that we want the user to provide exactly one command line argument. So if there's more than two or less than two arguments, we will print this error message. 
And then what we also want to do is that now that we have the input, we want to open it and check whether it's valid or not. And yep, so that would be that for this step. Next, we need to declare the variables and files for the next step. So what are these that we need to declare? So first, as we are iterating through the memory card in blocks of 512 bytes, we need to store the bytes well in blocks of 512. So we will also be tracking the number of images generated, so we should have an image counter. And also, as we find JPEG files to recover, it means that we will be putting them into an output file. So this means we should also declare a file pointer to handle the JPEGs that we will be recovering, and we should also allocate memory to the file name. So first, remember that we are combing through a copy of the image in blocks of 112 bytes, so this implies that we need to store the bytes into arrays of 512. So for this, we will use unsigned care for the buffer. This is because signed care can store both positive and negative values, and in this case, since our byte values cannot be negative, we will use unsigned care for this. Next, we'll need to keep track of the number of images generated as this will be used to name our files that we generate the images we recover. So we'll just declare an integer called count image that starts with 0 since we have not generated anything yet. Next, as we iterate through the file to find JPEGs, we will need to write these images into output files. So we should prepare a file pointer that we will use to handle these output files. So since we haven't generated any images at this stage, we will equate this file pointer to null. Lastly, we should allocate memory for the file name using malloc. This is used to allocate memory dynamically to a size specified. And this is a syntax for malloc that states that we need to allocate memory for the file name that we are generating that will consist of care values. So the size t will tell the system that you need space for the care values, where the size of each care is 8 bits. So upon successful memory allocation, the file pointer that is file name should point to the first byte of the allocated memory. So it will be care file name equals to malloc 8 times size of care. So let's put this in C. So we'll first start by storing the blocks of 512 bytes into arrays. So as we discussed, we'll use unsigned care for this. Right, and then next we also track the number of images that we are generating. And then next what we want to do is that we want the file pointer for the recovered images and we, that would be for output file that we discussed earlier on. And lastly, what we need to do is that we need to allocate memory for the file name. So that would be where we use malloc. And for us to be able to do this, to know what we need to do is that we also just need to scroll right to the top, right? And then we also need to include more elements. Right, and yep, so that's it for this step. Next, we need to iterate over a copy of the memory card in blocks of 512 bytes. So we start by first reading the file, and that is done by using F3. So buffer here points to the array where the objects are stored. So this buffer represents two blocks of 512 bytes that we declared earlier. Size of care represents the size of each object in the bytes. And 512 refers to the number of objects to read, and input file is the source. Now that we have the bytes in blocks of 512, we can comb through each block to find a block where the first 4 bytes matches the stated bytes that signal the start of a JPEG. How do we comb through the bytes to check if it signals the start of a JPEG? So we are first given 3 bytes, and the 4th byte could be any of these 16 bytes. So based on the above, we can actually guess that this would involve an if statement where we will write if the first 3 bytes, that is buffer 0, buffer 1 and buffer 2, equals to the respective bytes that we have. Then what about the 4th byte? Are we going to list down all 16 bytes that it could be? That would be quite tedious. So in the CS50 walkthrough for recover, it states that instead of writing down all 16 bytes that it could be, the first 4 bytes are actually 0, and we can represent it as such. But what does this actually mean? So these are actually hexadecimals where each represents 4 bits. So we can convert this hexadecimal to bits for us to understand this. So what we need to do is that we actually need to convert hexadecimals to bits 
and I've already included a link to a website that does this quite easily, and you can refer to that. So what happens is that for all the 16 bytes that buffer tree could be, I've converted it to binary as seen in this table. So essentially what we're saying is that buffer tree and 0xf0 equals to 0xe0, and I've put the respective binary values here for reference. So let's work with the first hexadecimal where I've converted it as such. So what does this and 0xf0, which equals to double one double zero, equal to? We need to overlap these two values and find the resulting binary value. So 0 represents false and 1 represents true. In the event we have 0 and 1, that is true and false, it will return false. So in a way, having false supersedes your true value. So let's apply this so that we can actually visualize it better. So we have 0xe0, which is triple one zero double zero double zero and double one double one double zero double zero. So what does this equal to? So let's go from right to left. So zero and zero gives you zero. So we have zero 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 zero. And then now we have zero and one. So as discussed, it will still give us false. So that would be zero. And then after that, we will have one and one giving us true. So we will have one one one. So the resulting value is triple one zero double zero double zero. And can you see that it equals the value here? So in the event we come across this byte as the fourth byte, it confirms that this is the JPEG signal. So let's move on to the next line where we have triple one zero triple zero one and double one double one double zero double zero. So from right to left we have true and false and that's false. Then we have zero 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 and true and false gives us false, so zero, then one, one, one. And again it equals the value here. So this applies to the next value, the next, and the rest of the hexadecimals. So this whole thing explains how and why if the 4 byte that is buffer tree and double one double one double zero double zero equals to triple one zero double zero double zero. So now let's just show another example where this does not work. So let's say the fourth byte is zero x e zero, which is not any of the sixteen bytes. It will be one zero one zero double zero double zero and double one double one double zero double zero. So from right to left, that will be double zero double zero. True and false, so we have zero, then one zero one. So you can see that this differs from what is given. So if we come across this, we know it is not the JPEG signal that we are looking for. So let's put this in C. So now what we'll do is that we'll be reading the blocks of 512 bytes. And as we read through the bytes, what are the things that we want to look out for? We want to look out for the JPEG signatures. So we will check if the bytes indicate the start of a JPEG. And yep, so that'll be that for this step. Next, we will work on the steps to take after we detect the JPEG signals. So firstly, we will need to create a file name of the image that we are going to generate. So we'll actually use the sprint function. So putting it into the syntax, this is what we get, where it specifies a pointer to the array of the care elements where the resulting C string is stored. Then we have the format of what to print. So this here tells the program that we should generate a file name that consists of three digits where we will print 0 in front of the number up to 3 places. Then, count image tells the program the i value to print in the file name. Next, after we detect a JPEG signal, we need to open the file that we are creating to write the recover image into. So we use fopen for that. And since our output is a file, we can use output file equals to fopen, where the file name is the address of the array for the care elements, and we will use w here as we want to write into it. Next, as we generate the recovered images, we will track the number of images and we will use count image plus plus for that. So each time we detect a JPEG signal, our count image counter will increase by 1. So up to this point, what have we done? As we iterate through the memory card and whenever we detect the JPEG signal, we will create the file name, open it, and keep track of the number of generated images. So this means that by the end of the iteration, we will actually have 50 file names. So how do we know which file name to use to write the recovered image into? 
So we will need to check that the file has not been used. So if the output file pointer of that particular value is not equals to now, that means that we can actually write into it. So putting this into code, it means if the output file pointer of the particular file does not return now, that means that we can actually write into it. So we'll use the fwrite function into this syntax here, where first it will state the array of elements to be printed, then after that it will be the size of the bytes for us to write, after that will be the number of elements to write each time, and after that output file will be the pointer to the file that we are writing into. So now what we've done is actually to write the recovered images into the respective files, and then now to end we need to close off all the files. So what are the current files that we've opened so far? So that would be input file and output file. So let's just use fclose to close these files up. So in the CS50 hints, it states that if we use malloc, which we did, there must be no memory leak. So do note, every time we use malloc, it actually reduces the amount of available memory, right? Because you're actually allocating memory each time you do malloc. So can you imagine that as every time you do that, it reduces the amount of available memory? So we must release the memory previously allocated. We'll just easily do that with free file name. So let's put this in C. So we'll start by first creating the file name. So this will tell the system to print up to three digits and we'll print zero in front up to three places. Next, what we want to do is that we'll open a file for us to write into. So that will be output file. Then after that, what we want to do is that we want to count the number of images that we have created so far. And then after that, what we want to do is that now that we have found the JPEG, what we want to do is to check if the output file has been used for valid input. If not, we'll be able to use it to write into it. And whoops, I see that everything here is orange. That is because of this part here. Okay, we have rectified it. Okay, so now we will also close the output file and close the input file. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we're going to try to compile this. So let's make recover. So let's just try an invalid input first. Now let's try the valid input with card.raw and you'll see that on the left hand side of your menu within Visual Studio, there'll be 50 files created and opening each one will show you a particular image that you have recovered. And yep, there you go. So this is the solution for our problem sets for recover. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video. If you found this video to be helpful, do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for your support.